Hello everybody, my name is Markiplier and welcome back to West of Loathing Reckoning at Gun Manor. So we're in a bit of a pickle because we gotta find this McCready person for the person in the parlor. We've made the chili, but we need to kill it before we can give it to the person who eats ghost food. And there's seven other, no, there's five other ghosts somewhere. There's two on the first floor, three on the second, two on the third. Who's the one on the third? I'll talk to you later. Okay, I'm on the second floor right- No, I'm on the first floor right now. So who are the ghosts here? We got Lard- Oh, the pants guy! Okay, so we gotta find some pantsless pants. And then we gotta deal with the guy in the dining room. That's the two up there. The three on the second floor are... Technically the librarian. So what does the librarian even need? What do you need? I was wondering how you died. I was caught in the crossfire in a library shootout. Wow, what happened? A pair of ruffians got into a heated argument over the comparative merits of Anton Chekhov versus Henrik Ibsen. When they started shooting, I attempted to step in and stop them. I simply won't abide gunfire in the library. It's far too loud. That was your only objection? The noise? That was quite sufficient. I won't tolerate- By the way, my cheeks are still in pain and they're still recovering, but the swelling has gone down. I won't tolerate noise of any stripe and certainly not gunfire. Ibsen versus Chekhov, huh? What was the point of their contention? I don't recall the particulars, I just remember Chekhov fans shouting, Remember that gun I showed you in Act 1 before opening fire? The noise was dreadful. Oh! I'll, I'll see what I can do. I'll see what I can do? Well, I didn't even have an opportunity to see what I could do. I don't know what I needed to do. What are you talking about? There's no noise in here. There's no gunfire. What? Hey, I know how to make guns quiet. Oh! Huh? How many times do I have to tell you? Sorry, but I know how to make guns quiet. Oh, really? Can you show me? You nod and quickly and quietly leave the library, gather materials for a silencer, head to the lab to craft it. Oh! That's because I already attached to my gun. That is incredibly helpful. I invented this thing that makes guns really quiet. Oh, how marvelous. Finally, I can rest in peace knowing that libraries will now be safe from the noise of gunfire. It is only in an atmosphere of quiet that true joy dare live. Bertrand Russell. And with that, she dissipates into nothingness. He isn't... He isn't famous yet! Okay then. Well, that's another one down, so that leaves two on the second floor. Who's the other one on the second floor? Not in the restroom, in one of the guest rooms. So it was this dude over here at number four. What do you need? What are the novelties? Ah, oh, I need to figure out how to make a cigar explode. So maybe there's something I could do in the lab down below with the cigar that I have to make it explode. That's the only thing that I could possibly think of. Because the only other thing here- I guess I haven't been back to the, the place down here very much. It's gotta be something, right? Okay, examine it. We got the silencer. We got the gun. So there's nothing here that can help us make an exploding... Whatchamacallit? Uh, this can't be anything else down here. Okay, let me wander around a bit. I'm gonna try to find... Why are you here? No. Why are you here? Ah! My phone! Oh, these plants of such flatness and rectangle. Yeah, hedges. They're grown in that way in a fancy garden sometimes. It is craziness. A nature perversion. Of all the stuff we've seen and done, this is what you get mad about? Let me walk around for a bit and I'm gonna try to find... Ooh, just nothing. Where is this place? I'm gonna try to find what we need to do next. Wait, I just had an idea. There is a cemetery somewhere. Yeah, petting cemetery. Reboot Hill, military cemetery. There's a couple cemeteries. Do I need to go find McCready's grave? The Dave Yard? Oh no, that's the- that's the graveyard with only Dave's in it. I forgot about that. I'll give him a ride to Dirt Water. Alright, you got two horses, why don't you ride them? You know how to ride- but there's a cart horses. Oh, oops. Oh, god damn it. Oh, well. <sighs> Alright, comb his mane, give him some peanut butter. He makes a sort of clerk noise. <laughs> the peanut butter makes Templar flap his lips and open his closed mouth. I forgot about Templar. Hung a clip drape ship shape tip top sock. That's weird. It looks like you're actually talking. Somebody once told me the world is curtain. Our tops. Oh, mm, an orange peanut for me. Wow. Well, I accept you. Oh, let's go, Templar. All right. I'm going to find. Okay. You know what? Maybe it wouldn't be. <laughs> Something doesn't seem right about this. I don't know 100% about this. Uh, McCready. Have I seen the name McCready anywhere? Yeah, no one named McCready, I'd, I'd guess. Eh, whatever. Let's go back to dirt water. Has anybody in town heard of McCready? Hey, bartender. You ever heard of McCready? Oh! I- I didn't know about that! Ever hear fellow- I- I honestly didn't know about that! I swear! What? 
Ever hear about a fella named McCready? McCready, nope, don't ring a bell. It would have been about 17 years ago. Heck, I got a long memory, but not that long. I only started working here about six or seven years ago anyway. What about the guest register? We only keep those for the last couple of years. Only place I know of might have been the records as far back as we need would be the post office. Okay, that is incredibly handy. Hello? Uh, I'm trying to find a guy named McCready. There's a possibility he might have passed through here about 17 years ago. Passed through? We don't stamp passports here. If he stayed for a while, he, I might have a forward in address. Ooh, can you check, please? All right, them books could use a dust in any way, one sec. She pulls out a big ledgers of her, out of her desk and blows a huge cloud of dust in the air, then starts leafing through them. 17 years, around about 78 then, 76, 78, 77. Marin, Mabelston, McMurphy, McCready. Got a Matt McCready. Not the one? That's him. No forward in address, but you could ask at his old place, just out the northwest of here. Let me see your map. Yeah, it looks like you already got it here. Desert House, that's the one. Really? I, uh, really? This? This place here is McCree this. Oh, isn't this where the gang was holed up? Wait. Yikes! Wait. M. McCready stuck to his guns. Dig up the grave. Oh. You dig up the wooden coffin, haul the lid open, a skeleton blinks at you, or, well, it doesn't, but anyway. Howdy? Howdy, are you guilty, McCready? Well, now, I ain't heard that nickname in, uh... What year is it? 1895. 17 years! Now, I tell a lie, there was that one time eight years ago. The same McCready that escaped the gallows during an eclipse? Heh! <laughs> Well now, since the statute of limitations is expired, I might as well fess up. Yeah, that was me. Real sweet plan, too. Apart from the one little hitch, it went off smooth as silk. Even worked in a little misdirection to lead the law to them other two fellas instead of me. Serves them right, too. They was real murderers. Not like me. I never killed a man except in a fair fight. Except for that one little hitch you mentioned, you miscalculated how long to delay the trial. So in order not to miss the eclipse, you call for a trial by combat. Oh! Well, yep, that's the truth of it. You're blaming me for Miss Wainwright's death, I suppose. Why didn't you just trust her? She would have gotten you declared innocent. She had a real good head on her shoulders, sure, but so did that prosecutor fella. I didn't rate the odds better than 50-50. Not good enough. And anyway, the trial by combat was part of her job. She should have been ready. That stinks! She trusted you! She's a ghost now because she feels guilty about losing that trial. I've spent ages trying to convince her you weren't innocent, and she backed you every step of the way despite the fact that you got her killed. And you don't even care. Hell! You bite your tongue, Sonny, you don't know me. Don't care. I did what I felt I had to to stay alive. And I felt damn guilty about what happened to Miss Wainwright. But I ain't taking all the blame for it, no sir. She'll tell you herself she should have been better prepared, just like she told me that day apologizing to her last breath. I gave up gunfighting for her. I gave up the only thing I lived for. That's about how I felt about it. You gave up gunfighting? Weren't easy, but I did. Bought this house, bought this land, raised some chickens, and had a little vegetable garden. Place has gone to hell since I died. That's a shame. Anyway, I never fired my pistol again. Not even at a damn fence post. That's not what it says on your grave. Huh? Oh, yeah. Read it again. That's the fella what killed me having a little ironic joke, I reckon. Somebody killed you? You're only a second person to track me down. First one was nine years after the trial. Vic Tinsbury's brother hunting for revenge. What happened? He challenged me to a duel, and I told him I ain't doing that no more. He asked again, and I said no, and he hollered at me, and I took my pistol out of the closet and threw it at his feet so he could see how the cylinders was all rusted shut. And he cocked his gun and asked me one last time, and I said no, and last thing I remember was the bang. Jeez. Kinda him to bury me, though. Guess he weren't all that bad. Do you want to see Felicity again? I could take her to you as a ghost. Nah, I reckon I'll just go back to sleep. Ain't right a dead fella walking around. Just tell her sorry for me, alright? Here, you can give her my pocket wash. She'll recognize it. McCready's pocket watch. Fancy silver pocket watch. Ooh, meat gains. Whoa! Meat gains an item. Whoa! That's pretty good. I'm too powerful as it is. I might do that. All right, bye, McCready. So long, fella. So long. Well, that was... That was quite nice. That was quite... That was quite something nice. All right, so I've got the gun manor, which gives a lot of moxie and damage. I guess I don't really need the meat, and I don't need the items that bad. You know what? It's fine. I'll take the damage. I'd rather just trounce on some some normie ghost in the in, in the basement or whatever I, I i'd rather just be have the ability to do that but no wait this is not the right one. Oh, i forget that there's two doors and the one closer isn't the right door 
What a stupid mansion. Okay, second floor. Hey, lady, you're finally done. My God, just get over it. Are you ready for this? What now? I found McCready's grave. He wasn't executed. You're... You're 100% certain it's him. Not some other man named McCready. It was him. Here, he gave me his watch to give to you. She turns the watch around in her hands for a while, just looking at it without saying anything. Then she slowly winds it and listens as it chimes the hour. Yeah, this is his watch, all right. Thank you. Wait, you said he gave it to you? He's alive? Oh, not exactly. He's a skeleton. We talked for a while, and then he asked me to bury him again so he could go back to sleep. What did he say? Well, he confirmed our guesses. He knew about the eclipse in advance and stalled the trial for his escape plan, but stalled it too long and decided to hedge his bet by calling for the trial by combat. I see. He gave up gunfighting. He what? He bought a little house and raised chickens, never fired his pistol again. In fact, he left it to rust. Nine years later, Tim Spurry's brother caught up to him and challenged him to a revenge match. McCready refused repeatedly, so the guy shot him. He said to tell you he was sorry. She looks at you silently for a moment, then looks at the watch. She winds the hand back a minute and listens as it chimes again. She sighs and shakes her head, then smiles at you. Thank you, Mumfler. You'd make a damn fine attorney. She shakes your hand and fades from view as she does so, leaving her attorney's badge in your hand. Oh, whoa, 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 damn, you get the best items in the game in this DLC, and what are you going to use it on? Nothing. Rest in peace. That was pretty good. I, I like that story arc. That was that was really good. Hey, my medal of adequacy. <laughs> I'm not sure which one's better. I think I'm gonna stick with my medal of adequacy if if it's all right. I, I like like the idea of it. <laughs> I just really like the hey my spleen. My spleen still got capacity. I've got some XP here, so I should probably do better on uh, mm, well, shooting any fan the hammer. Maybe fan hammer. Maybe that sounds like a good one. Quick on the draw, dirty poker. Sure, hardly knew her. Yeah, <laughs> and Moxie. Okay, got me upgrades. Not that I'm gonna need them. Being more powerful at this juncture doesn't exactly do me any good. But that's another. That's another ghost gone. That means we only got how many? Five left. One on this floor. Who's the other one? I took care of the librarian, oddly enough. Who's the other one on this floor? Uh, oh, the guest. That's right. I need to find a way to make an exploding pickle. Let's go up to the third floor, because I gotta remember exactly what I need to do here. The pool guy. You. What did I need to do for you? Oh, I need ghost chalk. Where in the hell am I gonna get ghost chalk? How would I do that? I don't even understand where I would start. It says there are two ghosts up here. Two ghosts on the third, but the only other one that I know of is in the billiards room. Does that mean that Mrs. Gunn is a ghost? Cause if there's two ghosts up here and the only one is the billiards ghost, then that means, if it means what I think it means, it means that there's something going on. And let me, let me fight some ghosts. I wanna see, I wanna see if, um, if this actually could do something. What about Fan the Hammer? Oh my gosh, shoot the target four times doing 500 damage. Oh my god. <laughs> Hang on, let me let me keep I wanna see if I can get enough bowling ball chunks to like maybe combine them into something. Alright. Bowling ball hat. Oh. <laughs> uh, let me see if there's some stuff to be had here. I don't know if there is. Oh, oh my oh my god! Oh my god! Oh, Oh my- oh my god. Oh my god. Oh shit! That fu- that hurts so bad! And why can none of my other guys hit anything? I'm gonna fan the hammer on you, I'm not even gonna risk it. Jeezums! Okay, ow, and I'm angry. G good thing I didn't get any more angry because I would have fallen over and died. And then I would have lost all my buffs for the day and then I would have passed out and it would have been no good. All right, cheap cigar. I've, already, I've got plenty of cheap cigars. What do I do with the cheap cigars? I gotta make it into a bomb. How do I make it into a bomb? I don't understand anything. All right, how would we kill this chili that we've got? Because we've got a bowl of chili. How do we kill it? How do you kill chili? Oh, there's a pair of your size. Fancy pantry pants. Oh, 
All right, well, that's handy cold resistance pants just in case you need them there. All right, so where am I gonna get more pants? I've been everywhere in this manor. I can't think of a single place that I haven't been, and there's nothing in the basement that's gonna be additional. What about this place? Wait, what is that? Oh, it's a wheel on a cart. I thought there was something else. Yeah, what about this place? Rat sit. I don't know what that means. Oh my god! It's a Sophie with some nice throw pillows. Smother the chili with a pillow. Oh my god, you sigh and do what has to be done! Chili sin pistoles muerto! Oh my god! Oh! Oh, okay, that makes perfect sense. I'm- that's fine. This is good. This is what you call good. Yeah, that's great. Hey, buddy. You hand the ghost the ghostly bowl of chili and immediately gobbles it up with a long, finally satisfied sigh he dissipates. Happy trails, big guy. Hey, buddy. Thank you so much for dealing with that ghost. I am exhausted. What were you even doing? He kept demanding ghost food, but I don't really know how to cook. Except like nachos and popcorn. And just the regular kind, not ghost nachos and popcorn. But he really was insistent. So I figured ghost food is probably invisible, right? So I just pretended and gave him empty plates. I guess it worked, even though that doesn't really make sense. Huh. Anyway, thanks again. I work at the snack bar in the visitor center, so I'll see you there. All right, well, I guess I'll go over there, see what's going on in the snack bar, and maybe he can help me progress on one of the other storylines. I'm getting close. There's only three, wink, 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 wonk, wonk. There's only three, <sighs> only three ghosts, wink, 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 wonk, left. Snack catter is now, there we go, see what's for sale. Why do I have to buy a gun-shaped cookie? Why would a gun-shaped cookie give my spell damage up? I don't understand. Dad, what are you dealing with? Is there anything in this that I actually need? Because I don't think so. I'm pretty sure the answer would be no, right? Right? Where's the photo guy? Yeah, where's the photo guy? I don't remember seeing any other people in the manor, so I don't know where they would be. Okay, so the only thing left to do at this juncture, because I am missing some chalk for the thing, and that's about it. I just need to go to every single room again, check everything, because at this point I'm lost, and I'm not 100% sure where to go. And typically this, good, this game has been good about guiding you to the right place, but man, I am just, I'm lost. I need some ghost chalk, I need to find a way to make a pickle explode, and I need pants. So it doesn't seem like it would be that bad, but uh, I seem to be at a loss. Blank chalkboard! Oh god, boo, but chalk. Take the chalk. Yes, that, that, that should be enough. I have chalk. There was a chalkboard. It booed me, but it was a chalkboard. I, I think that's gonna be it. Yee, yee, yee. Okay, so that's gonna be it. Usually, usually what I'm finding is usually the solution is on the same floor. Wink, 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 wonk. So, yeah, let's do this. Okay, it's a close match. You have to consult the geometry book a few times to work out the angles. The game comes down to fight for the eight ball, and you manage to barely squeak out the win when the ghost catches an unlucky bounce off the corner of the pocket. Well, shucks. Nice shooting, Tex. He flips you a finger gun salute, winks, and fades into nothingness. Hooray! Hey, hooray! Now I just need to find pantaloons, and if I'm going by the same logic I had before, it's gotta be right here! Rat sit! Sit rat! Ratty sit! Sit my rat! Ugh, maybe it's not as far as I think it- I mean, let me- let me talk to this man again. Hey, how you doing? Hey, I'm seriously sick of your weird area and, and also your weird face. Not yet, but I'll keep looking. Okay, so it's not in here. That much is clear. Three ghosts left. Current location. Blue is at lower half off. I could just blow his upper half off to match and we could call it a day. But what'd you- what would you blow it off of? <laughs> see? Not so simple, you dumb! You stupid! I've been turning the lamps off, I don't know why. I feel like it actually does something, but it probably does not. Lardest does not help me. The cold pantry does not help me. Nothing here helps me. There's gotta be some pants. Some pantless pants. Oh wait, this guy, wait! Yeah, Paul! Paul, I took care of the ghosts! I forgot about Paul! Oh shit! 
All right, okay, thank you. Ahem, oh, thank God. I've got to wash this flower off and get back to work. But first, he starts frantically scratching every part of his body. Man, feels like I've been saving up these itches for days. I was about to go crazy. Thanks, Mom Fleur, you're a lifesaver. No problemo. Come see me at the visitor center. I'll hook you up with a souvenir photograph. <gasps> he might have gunpowder for the flash. Oh, shit. Wait a minute, that's a good point. Let me just, uh, let me just make sure the, the whatever lamp is in here is off. It is off. Is there another one in the back? I don't know what it would do if I did, but I kind of want to just try to turn off all the lamps. Probably not going to do much of anything, but you know, I am a pointless bitch, so I do what I can. Alright, so you have got gunpowder, correct? Please say yes. Thanks again for your help. What an ordeal. No problem. How's the itching? Uh, more or less better. I mean, hygiene is what it is in this day and age, you know? You nod. Would you like a souvenir photograph? It's only 200 meat. I need to sell something to this candy man. All right, bowling ball chunks, those can go. All those, these new fancy pantry pants can go. Tin caviar. Increase your meat drop bonus by 25 for the rest of the day. I'm okay, I don't need it, so I'm just gonna throw it away. Uh, now I'm gonna do it. Sure, I'll take one. Okay, then smile. Wait a second, this is a photograph of the house. Yep, an official gun manor souvenir photo. All right, why'd you take a picture of me then? Oh, just for our records. I. Oh, okay. But, sorry, only one photo per customer. I'm not sure why anybody would want to buy two, but fair enough. But, yo, oh, I thought, I thought for certain, like, the Flash would have, like, gunpowder. You know what I mean? Like, for, uh, explodey cigar. Really? Ah! Well, I'm so smart! I'm big smart. These guys aren't appreciating my big smart brain. Alright, there's gotta be, like, some kind of a secret here. Oh. What the hell? How did, how have I not been here? That must be the hedge wizard. Give him a trimming. Oh! Okay. Hedges! Heed my call! Right. Man, you suck. Can I do a shoot nanny? Will it just spill over to the other guy? There we go! <laughs> Little bitch. Alright, you've only succeeded in kicking the hedge wizard's ass down the road a ways. It was still pretty satisfying. Alright. Let's chase that jerk down! Oh, it's a big topiary W. Maybe it stands for, why would somebody make a topiary W? That's a good point. Well, at least he didn't run very far. Not far enough, by far. Hedges, heed my call! Okay. I'm still just gonna shoot an Annie you. Fa I mean, fan the hammer you. <laughs> oh shit, you're still here. Spores! <laughs> well, shit! Alright, can I just shoot you? Bang, easy. Find him and end it. Okay, he ran away again. H is for hedge, probably. Oh my god! What is that? Okay, at this point he's got nowhere left to run to. Well, assuming that weird portal behind him is exit only. Alright! Hedges, heed my call! Alright, let's blast all the enemies. Well, that was much better than whatever crap you were doing before. Maybe dynamite? Maybe I dynamite the other guys. Throw. Throw. Bro, just in case, I don't- I don't think I need to, but you know, just in case I've got them and I might as well use them. I don't want them risk- cause I got- I got whammed by the freaking bowling ball, so I might as well just blast these guys- Ah, I got ya! Finally, you got an item, the Hedge Wizard's journal. Somebody has scrawled private, do not read, HW, on his spine of his journal. Oh, HW. It's his initials. The Hedge Wizard's Orb. This is the orb of mystical leaves from whence the Hedge Wizard derived all of his powers. Unless it was one of those, the magic was inside you all along scenarios. Maybe. You never know. What is this? Hedge Wizard's secret stash in a treasure chest of goblin manufacture. You got 742 meat and hedging your bets. This is the book the Hedge Wizard used to earn enough meat to become a wizard. The terminology is just a coincidence. Oh, that's funny. Read. You read the book and learn all about the things that financial responsibility and decorative horticulture have in common. Oh! 20% of meat games. After reading the book, you resolve to make some budget cuts, but you mistake the book for your budget and cut it into pieces instead. That's dumb. That's dumb. I'm gonna read this journal. It's full of terrible poetry. Here's an example. Everlasting shrubbery. Nobly leaf crown- Wait, hang on. Let me really get the atmosphere up in here. Everlasting shrubbery. Hang on. Cut the music. Everlasting shrubbery. Put in some different music. Everlasting shrubbery. Nobly leaf crowned, whence comes all joy. Sweet thy fragrance, wondrous thy strength. Namaste, namaste, my lord. <laughs> that is terrible. 
Let's read it again. Oh, no, it's the same thing. Oh, I thought it was a randomly generated one. Okay, whatever. All right. It's some kind of portal. Kick in the music again. It's some kind of portal made of and filled with enchanted shrubbery. Right. So what was the point of this? What? I didn't even know this was here. Is there more stuff in this maze? I guess it is a maze. It's got little nooks and crannies, but did I do any good? Oh. 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 Oh, shit. Oh, it's the actual maze. Wait. Okay, so there is there actually, like, a way out of this? Okay, anywhere in this, did I find a code of some kind anywhere? Like, a pattern or anything like that that would help me get out of that? Because that actually is interesting. Maybe... Maybe the poem. East, no East, north, west, south, north. Yes! East, north, west, south, west, north. North. Got it. I've got it. I've got it, everybody. East, north, west, south, west, north. Boom! Dude! The hedge wizard's orb starts vibrating as you get close to this weird human-shaped bush. Touch it. Not you again. Wait. You're not him. <laughs> nope, I'm Mumfler. Nice to meet you. I'm the hedge. The... Hedge? Yeah, the hedge. The source of all magic in the maze, yada yada. Boy, I can't tell you how glad I am to see somebody besides that dorky wizard. Did... did you... Yep, I took care of him. Thank you! I made the mistake of granting him a boon and he started treating me like a god or something. Coming around day after day, prostrating himself before me like a huge dweeb. Just awful. I mean, sure, I'm powerful and all that, but it's not like I did anything to get this way. I mean, I'm rooted into the ground, for heaven's sakes. I just grew this way. Anyway, you mentioned, uh, Boon? Oh, sure, sure, I guess I owe you that much for getting rid of the clown. Here you go. Hedge bends towards you and touches you with one of his bows. I've been blessed by the hedge. Oh, cool. Don't mention it. Now, um, I should be getting back to my business here. You can see yourself out, right? Uh, you should leave him alone. You wouldn't want him to think you're some kind of a dweeb. I- I might. I might want that. I might- I might- I might want that. Hey, hey, buddy, hey. Listen, pal. Listen, all right, whatever, I guess I'm a dweeb. Well, I thought that was gonna help me progress the storyline. I still don't know how to make a cigar explode or nothing. I am just make something. Oh. Oh! A hat. A wreath of laurels. Regenerate 9 HP for combat, that's nice. A weapon? Bushwhacker getting hit with this, okay. How about a salad, haha? -ha. Magic infused salad. I have no more leaves, I guess I'm leaving. Well then what was the point of that? Oh, there's a plaid skirt in here. That's sort of like legless pants. Oh, is that gonna work? You could definitely convince the guy in the pantry that this is a kilt. Ah! But do I have to kill them first? I don't know if I have to smother them with a pillow to make them ghost pants or ghost skirt. But that might work. And then all that would leave would be the cigar one and then Mrs. Gunn, who's probably a ghost. How about this skirt? Look, I understand the generalization of clothing maybe shouldn't be a thing, but I'm kind of old-fashioned. Or did I say skirt? I meant kilt. What's a kilt? It's a special kind of foreign legless pants for men. Here, try it. The ghost tries on the sk- I mean kilt. Hey, that's really nice. Thanks a lot. With his pants problem solved, he dissipates into the ether. That is great! Then all I need to do is make a cigar explode without being overly deadly and then that's it, right? 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 Bling blong bling blong wink wonk? Right. You know the firecrackers Wait a second, what if you stuck this into the one of the- so I had the thing the whole time. I completely forgot. I got this from that toy mine outside of the kids' room so long ago. Yeah, what if? Wait a second, if you stuck this in one of the- I knew! Is that right outside the door of where I need- No, it's in a different location. It's in the children. But that's- that's the same general principle. I got an exploding cigar. Hilarious. Oh, god damn it. I had it with me the entire time. Frick! 
My dick. Okay, anyway, it's fine. Hey, buddy, look, you're about to be hilarious. Hey, friend. Did you figure out? Yeah, here. Uh, I think this is what you're looking for. That's an exploding cigar? Yep. Sometimes the cigar is just a cigar, but not this time. What did you use for the explosive? I found a really small firecracker, just big enough to blow up the cigar without it also blowing up someone's face. Also without the, you know, violent lead projectile. You're a genius. Please let me see it in action before I can finally rest. Light it up. Oh boy. Kaboom. Oh! Whoa! He just... He vibrated into nothingness! Alright. What's up, Docs? She raises an eyebrow at you and glances at one of her. There's only one le ghost left in the manor in the premises, and it's on the third floor. So this must be Mrs. Gunn. That's the only explanation for this. Right? It must be Mrs. Gunn. Knock. I do feel significantly less haunted. Did you get rid of all the ghosts? We sure did, ma'am. Actually, my scanner says there's still one. Shh! Ma'am! All ghosts accounted for. Well, that's splendid. Come right in. Oh, I knew it. I knew it. Uh, hello, Mrs. Gunn. Hello, Mumfler, was it? Thank you so much for getting rid of all the ghosts for me. Yeah, about that. Turns out there's one left. Oh, dear. Well, I'll need you to take care of it before I can pay you. Ms. Gunn, I've got some bad news for you. Oh, what's that? It's you. You're a ghost, ma'am. Well, I'll be. When did that happen, I wonder? My condolences. Why, thank you. You're very kind. You know, this does explain some things. Like what? Well, I haven't had any appetite for months. Nearly a year, in fact. They kept sending food up from the kitchen in the dumbwaiter, but I've just been dropping it out the window and sending the empty plates back so the chef won't ever have feelings hurt. There's uh, also the fact that you're well translucent. Yeah, I thought it was just the cataracts. Mrs. Gunn, this prompts a question, you know. Oh, well, what's that? Why are you a ghost? Well, I'm sure I don't know. You're the expert, perhaps you can tell me. Ahem. Actually, that's me. I am the expert. Do you have some kind of unfinished business? Something that's tying you to this place? Well, now that you mention it, yes, I suppose I do. Do you mind telling me about it? My, my entire family disappeared a few years ago. My husband, my three daughters. Oh, yeah, I heard about that. I'm sorry for your loss. The sheriff suspected they'd been kidnapped for ransom, but no one ever made any demands. They just vanished. I never found out what happened. I always thought they were taken away by ghosts. Why did you think that? I've always felt guilty about how many people have been killed by my invention. The belt buckle? The gun. Oh, right, yeah. I used to worry that their ghosts would come back to haunt me. When I built this house, I had an electrical anti-ghost field installed in the walls of this room, so they couldn't get in. No way! Awesome! Wait, doesn't that affect you? Well, I'm sure it would if I attempted to walk through the wall, but it never occurred to me to try. After Dan and the girls disappeared, I became so sure that ghosts had gotten them that I locked myself in here after donating the rest of the house to the historical society so that there'd be someone to look after the place. Now I feel rather silly about the whole thing. Silly? I mean, ghosts do exist, obviously. Well, yes, but now that I'm a ghost myself, I can sense the presence of other ghosts, and they only just arrived in this house yesterday or the day before. That's when I called for the exterminator. You know I didn't even question how I knew where they were there, but I don't think there have been any ghosts here before then. Huh. Why did they all show up yesterday? I couldn't say. They all seemed very angry and confused, but since they couldn't get in here, they gave up and started just wandering around the house. They gave up quite easily, actually. Maybe because you were already a ghost yourself. Hmm. Well, Ms. Gunn, what are we going to do with you? What do you mean? You did contact me for 13 ghosts, ma'am. You're the 13th. Oh, yes. Obviously, I could simply renegotiate the number with you, but perhaps you should go ahead and exercise me or whatever you do. I'd rather find a more peaceful solution. A peaceful solution? Well, what do you mean? Well, we can also release you from your ghostitude by solving the problem that's keeping you here. In your case, I guess that means finding out what happened to your family. Oh! Well, I, I would be grateful if you could. I assume they're dead, and to be honest, I think I've gotten used to the fact. But I surely would like to know what actually happened. All right, I'll see what I can do. Did I see what I can do? I've, I've, I've explored a lot. What is, what is in this room? Oh, goodbye, apparently. A sign on this case says, break in case of attic. Break it. Attic opening stick. I remember there being an attic. I definitely remember that. 
Ms. Gunn's vanity is elegant, but not ostentatious. Look in the mirror. You take a long, hard look at yourself in the mirror and think about the things you've done. A lot of those things were pretty cool. <laughs> yes, they were. Yes, they were. All right, so there was an attic somewhere, maybe over here in the billiards area. I think there was like an opening over here. Yeah, 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 here. Okay. Doink. Easy peasy. Oh, hi. Okay. This dresser is now dressed as a ghost. All right, hello. Hey, who the heck are you? I'm Mumfler Fumperdink, but since I'm not the guy who's apparently hiding out in Miss Gunn's attic, I feel like you ought to be the one answering that question. Who am I? Well, that's just freaking typical. I'm Chet Bullet, damn it. How am I supposed to have heard of that name before? Yes, you damn well shoulda. Miss Gunn's invention would have been nothing without mine. Wait, let me, let me guess. You invented the bullet? Phew. I thought you for sure you were gonna say belt buckle again. Oh shoot, now I want to change my guess. You're damn right I invented the bullet, but I was her assistant, so I did I get any credit? Hell no! I'll feel like t <laughs> maybe I'll feel like talking. Sounds like you got an axe to grind. Not for much longer. <laughs> oh jeez. Yeah, it looks like we found the bad guy. Okay, check. Go ahead and tell us the details of your whole nefarious plan. I don't care much for your tone. Why should I tell you anything? Well, if you don't want to take credit for whatever your genius plan is, I'm fine to let you languish in obscurity. Huh. Well, it's too late for you to stop me anyway, so I suppose it wouldn't hurt to tell you. Certainly not as much as not telling me would. When Mrs. Gunn dies, control of the company and patent passes is to me. I'm no murderer, mind you. I like to keep my hands clean. <laughs> but I figured there might be some other people who'd have a bone to pick with her considering the manner of her death. You summoned all these ghosts? That's right. All it took was some basic seance equipment, wired up to the house's bell fry for amplification, a snap for mechanical geniuses like me. But seance gear summons ghosts related to the summoner. That's the whole point of a medium. A person who knows how to direct the summoning on someone else's behalf, so you can get to talk to your own grandma instead of the summoners. You don't seem like a medium to me, more like a small. But that does explain something I've been wondering about. Oh. It didn't make any sense for all the ghosts here to be haunting Mrs. Gunn, because some of them weren't killed by guns, but they were all killed by bullets. Naturally, I anticipated that there'd be a couple of those. That's why I rigged this room with an anti-ghost field, which I cleverly boosted so that ghosts couldn't even sense me up here. So your plan was to summon a bunch of angry ghosts who would initially be looking for you, but would haunt Mrs. Gunn instead when they couldn't find you. Correct. And once they've all haunted her to death, Gunn Industries will be all mine. Well, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, of good news, but Mrs. Gunn is dead. On the bright side, she's been dead for a year, so you pretty much wasted your time. What? Really? <laughs> I'm rich! Now I just need to get out of here with all, all those ghosts spotting me. Yeah, the ghosts are gone too, so you're pretty much in the clear. Wonderful! The anti-ghost field is pretty effective, but it was starting to make the back part of my brain itch. He flips the switch on the electrical device and you suddenly become aware of the absence of an extremely low frequency hum right on the edge of your hearing. There's something else I want to ask you about. Ask away! What happened to Mrs. Gunn's family? Oh, them? Well, they've been out of the picture for years. I heard a rumor Dan got killed by desperados and buried in a shallow grave out in the backside of nowhere. But of course, I wouldn't actually know anything about that. <laughs> Lucky for me, since I couldn't have inherited the company with him around. Or their daughters. You son of a- Relax, the girls are fine. I'm not a monster. I'm pretty sure you're a monster. There's a weird little island kingdom somewhere on the other side of the ocean. Apparently it's stuck in some kind of a bizarre temporal field that keeps nearly anyone from entering or leaving. Can't even find the place if you don't know how. Fortunately, I know of a guy who knows how. So I gave the girls three free tickets to sleepaway camp. Wasn't that nice of me? You're an absolute bastard. Oh, that hurt my feelings. Fortunately, I'm about to have a whole lot of money to console myself with. Why, you? Hold on, hold on. We should talk to Mrs. Gunn first before you tear this ass a new hole. Huh? I thought you said she was dead. Depending on what she says, you might be too. Oh, interesting. Oh, interesting. Oh, interstingy. The plot thickens. The plot thickens. Hello, I've got some good news and some bad news. Chet Bullet had your husband killed and your daughter's kidnapped, so he'd be the sole inheritor of your company when you died. He's also the reason all the ghosts were here. That son of a... I should have suspected something when he suddenly started being so ingratiating back then, and when he wrote off desperados on his expense account. Oh, <laughs> that's funny. I'd write him out of my will, but I suppose it's too late. That's rather galling. What's the good news? He says your daughters are safe. They're just on a magical island somewhere that nobody could get to. That's not exactly comforting, but at this point, I'll take it. Plainly, if he'd wanted to kill them, he'd have just done so. 
Wait, you spoke to him personally? Yeah, he didn't know you were already dead, so he's been hiding in your attic for the last couple of days waiting for the ghost to kill you. What do you want me to do with him? <sighs> I'll leave it up to you. I'm not in a state to make any reasoned judgment. In any case, you've answered my question, and I can feel myself moving on already. Thank you for all your help. With a sad wave, Mrs. Gunn fades from view. Then almost as an afterthought, the lock on her desk drawer pops open. Inside, you find a check written out to Cunningham Ghost Annihilation Services, which Flo snags with a cha-ching and a blueprint. Mrs. Gunn's blueprint. This blueprint represents what would have been the crowning achievement of Mrs. Gunn's career if she hadn't died before actually getting into the production. Okay, good. Can I make the most ultimate gun to make me even more overpowered than I already am? That'd be nice. Hey, I'm back. Thanks for waiting. Well, are we finished here? I've got a business to run. I'm not done with you yet. Wait here. I guess I am done with him, aren't I? Well, I mean, what should I do? I don't even know. He is an asshole. Huh. Wait. Hang on a second. I know what I need. If this is a gun to like the ultimate gun, I'm gonna go, I think in the basement there's a gun manufacturing thing. I'm gonna go make the gun and then shoot this guy in the face with that gun because I ain't about the whole forgiveness shtick at the moment. <laughs> make Mrs. Gun's opus. Wow. You follow the directions and construct your final gift to the world. This is the best gun Mrs. Gunn never got the chance to make. You vow to commit so much violence in her name. Well, you are goddamn right about that. And, you know, frankly, I am exceptionally happy about that. That is a big gun. That's a big gun. And you know what else it needs? It needs a silencer. Uh, I've already got a silencer. Oh, wait, do I already have one? Do I? Oh, I do. Oh, silent my pistol. Okay, there we go. <laughs> no one's gonna hear me shoot him in the face. No one at all. <laughs> I am gonna shoot this guy in the face so hard. I am gonna blast his ass out of existence with Mrs. Gunn's magnum opus. Get ready! <laughs> it's gonna be tricky with all the internal bleeding. Oh, wow. Holy shit. What are those gonna do for me? Can you just shoot everything? Not sure if this is a good idea. Oh! Wait, impervious to attack. Wait, so I have to destroy all of the, um... Huh. Interesting. Well, it would be unfortunate if I used a bunch of bullets on these boxes of bullets. Okay, here's how we're gonna do this. I'm gonna use my bullets, set these on fire. Boom. Oh! 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 Kaboom? Oh, I'm gonna shoot Nanny your ass. Oh, I'm gonna shoot Nanny your ass so good. I'm gonna shoot your ass as grass, buddy. Your ass is grass. Yeah! <laughs> Boom! You give up? What do you mean you give up? Chet falls to his knees, you decide to let him dangle for a minute with you, while you rifle through his stuff. Oh my god! This bullet's made of a new kind of lead that's even worse for you than normal lead. Oh wow, that's a lot of bullets. <laughs> what, do I just throw bullets? Is that what I do? You beat the hell out of Chet Bullet, then hog time and drag him down to the visitor center. The employees assure you they'll hand him over to the sheriff for whatever jurisdiction this is. Good. Well, that's it. You reckon you've brought some reckoning to Gun Manor, not with the best possible reckoning, mind you. Maybe there's a better way to deal with Chet. What? No. What? Oh, wait. Wait. What? What? I didn't know this was here. Are you kidding me? Oh, are you kidding? What? Are you? Ah! Ah! Are you kidding? Me! Fucking! Are you f Ugh! If I Alt F4 out of the game, where is it gonna load me back in? Is it gonna load me back in before I did anything? Is it gonna- where is it gonna put me? No, it's saving. Oh, it's sinking. Oh, it's sinking up. Oh, you- I'm fucking- Oh, it's gonna- Oh, I'm gonna be- oh! oh, screw that so hard. Screw that so hard. That makes me feel so bad. That makes me feel so- I went through this DLC as carefully as I could. And then when I think I'm at the end with- presented with the- Oh my god! 
I bet what I bet it is, what I bet it is, and I didn't even know this existed until after I had fought Chet, what I bet it is, is that there was some way to use this, this, um, this, like, device to ring the bells to, like, summon some ghosts or something. <sighs> God, that makes me feel so bad! I was having such a good time with this DLC, I feel so bad! That makes me feel like shit! That makes me feel like a big pile of garbage! God fucking damn, I was having such a good- oh! Man, that really sucks! I guess that's the end, but, you know, if you- just take this as a warning, I guess, that, you know, if- when- if you're playing this DLC, there's another ending that you can get if you don't fight the bad guy that seems like you're supposed to fight him. So I guess I'll end it here. Can I get some pity likes, some pity subs, some pity bell rings, just to make me feel better? I feel real bad, guys. Feel real bad. Anyway, maybe someday I'll play through it again. I was having fun. I mean, this DLC is good. It is good. I'm not saying the DLC is not good, but man, I feel feel like shit now. But anyway, sorry to end this on a somber note, but that is the end of Reckoning at Gun Manor. This is great DLC. I had a lot of fun with it. I really did. This had a lot of good laughs, had a lot of good jokes. It didn't repeat a lot of the old jokes. It made a lot of new funny stuff, and it was interesting to try to solve all these mysteries of these ghosts. With that said, thank you everybody so much for watching. If you want to see the rest of West of Loathing, the link is in the description below. The whole playlist is there. It is a great game. It really is. If you haven't played this for yourself, you really got it. It's just so much fun. There's so much to do in this. It's so in-depth, and there's a lot of choices that you gotta make that you gotta be careful with, because if you make the wrong choice sometimes, then, you know, it will come back to bite you in the ass, but I guess that's just the nature of the game. So thank you everybody so much for watching, and as always, I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye